Hi, good morning everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another post uh, ER night shift COVID update. Um, boy, busy. Uh, lots and lots of COVID. All of a sudden, you know, I think in June we hardly saw a COVID case at all. And last two nights I've, I've seen a ton. All my partners have seen a ton. Um, all of them are unimmunized. I didn't see any breakthrough cases. You know, breakthrough cases don't usually have to come to the hospital. They, if you get a breakthrough case, it's typically sniffles and things like that. But, you know, COVID really hit home for us in our department uh, this week because we have uh, we had a death from COVID of somebody that worked in the emergency department, um, someone who had been here for a very, very long time, uh, chose not to get immunized and uh, unfortunately uh, died in the ICU from COVID. Um, just in the last couple of days, and it's a it's a tragedy. It, you know, it's it's hard to lose part of the family, um, especially in you know, and when I, you know, feel like it was a preventable thing. We have you know, we have healthcare providers that still don't you know want, want to get immunized, and I think right now we have five nurses out with COVID. Um, I think one of them is, was immunized. The rest weren't. Only one got it at work, but. So we have five out. We had a big outbreak on the floor of nurses and other uh, people who were unimmunized that uh, got it. And you know, in this setting, with a with a virus that's as as contagious as Delta is, unfortunately, um, if you're not immunized, you're really putting yourself at risk. And all the hospitals in North Carolina have mandated it. And I I get. Um, people's concerns about mandated vaccines, and I don't think it should be mandated universally. However, uh, I do feel like if you're working in a in a in a situation where you can potentially expose other people who are vulnerable in a, in a hospital setting, then that's not unreasonable. And I you know I don't disagree with it um, uh, in that setting because I think we've got a, a higher responsibility. We've got a responsibility for our patients to protect them, and if we can potentially give them a, pro, a, a disease, we need to. Do everything we can to prevent that. Um, you know, COVID cases are, are, are going up. Uh, the seven-day moving average um, is 73,000 uh, now. Uh, we had that big outbreak a year ago in the summer, and that the numbers we're seeing now are higher than that. Now, they're not higher than they were in the dark days of January, February of this year, um, but they're still high. Um, the numbers are up 523% since June. And I think I've alluded to the fact that in June we hadn't really seen, we really weren't seeing much COVID at all. Um, the uh, seven day moving averages of hospitalizations are up 41% this week compared to the week before. Uh, we are seeing that here. We're seeing lots of um, unimmunized sick people. The difference is if you're immunized, you're really, your risk of being hospitalized, risk of uh, death is about you know 0.1 percent, something like that. It's, it's microscopic. Um, if you're unimmunized, it's it's quite a bit higher than that. Um, but you know, people are not stupid. You know, I think they've been given. A lot of people have kind of believed a lot of this nonsense that you know these COVID uh, conspiracy people, Mercola and the like, that have been you know making money pawning these crazy conspiracy theories since the beginning. But people are waking up and you know, I think when they start seeing people around them coming down and getting sick and young people getting sick and everything else. And so immunization rates are up you know, greater than 200 um, percent, especially in the areas that are the hardest hit with the Delta variant. Um, this is my prediction about what's going to happen with Delta. And I'm, I may be wrong, but if you look at what happened in India, where they had a massive spike in cases all related to Delta and also in the UK, um, those spikes have now kind of fallen off the cliff and um, numbers have plummeted in both of those areas and they haven't done anything differently. Um, and what happened is, you know, I think you got a, a highly virulent, highly contagious virus. And there's a reason that viruses are not typically that contagious is because if they are, what they'll tend to do is is spread and burn out a population. And so we may see that in the US and we may see a month from now, all of a sudden cases sort of falling off the off the cliff. And I'm hoping that we're gonna see a similar um, response to Delta uh, as you, the UK and India did. A um, couple of interesting you know, things we talked about, you know, nurses, and I'm not trying to single out nurses or other healthcare providers, but uh, the AMA did do a survey in June of physicians and the percentage of physicians, practicing physicians 
in the U.S. who are fully immunized is 96%. So, you know, the people that, you know, ostensibly have the most training, the most experience, have the, probably the most understanding of the science, 96% of those people are immunized. Um, the other interesting thing is that 78% of child care providers are immunized. And I think that speaks to um, the, the motivation to be people that do child care because they want to protect those kids. So um, as I've been saying all along, you know, the vaccine is safe. It is very effective. It will keep you out of the hospital. It will keep you from dying. Um, the, the risks are very, very minimal. Uh, the risks of getting COVID are very significant. Do your best to, to protect yourselves. You know, masks are coming back. Why is it our masks are coming back? Because they work, unfortunately. I've started wearing masks again in stores because Delta is so contagious that literally you can walk by somebody that has it and catch it. That's how contagious it is if you're unimmunized. And you can even catch it, you know, if you're immunized, you're just not gonna get sick, but you can still give it to others because we talked about the viral load in the nasal passages. Listen, it was a tough couple of nights here. I am exhausted. I'm gonna call it quits. Um, I am working on the revised COVID protocol. If you want that, um, just send an email to info at vitalitymwi.com or submit a request for that through our website, which I'll put upstairs above me as well. Um, also, I am available for telehealth consults. If you happen to have COVID and you're interested in ivermectin or something like that, want an opinion, and if you're local, want um, if you meet eligibility to be tr treated, treated with that, um, those are some of the services that we do provide. I do think that there's reasonable data to think that ivermectin may be helpful. It's not a cure. Um, I don't think it's a cure. But the supplement list that we've been putting out that I originally wrote in April of 2020 um, has been tweaked a little bit, but basically those basic guidelines of, of those supplements have been pretty consistent. So if you want it, let us know. As usual, be careful. Look out for yourselves. Look out for others. Look out for your families. Wash your hands, wear your masks. Talk to you soon. Good night.